Hello there, this is Roberto Matthews with another tip. I wanted to reply to one of my subscribers who asked me to make a follow-up video about how uh, paths work. Um, let's start with uh, this video here is going to be a little simpler on some of the simple shapes that you can make as a, with path. Um, and then the next video is going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, and so let's start with this first video. We're going to just work with circles, ellipses, and polylines and polygons. Okay. So the first thing is the circle. As you can see here, I kind of uh, elaborated on my grid system. I added uh, these thick lines so that we can hash out the 50 yard line in the middle here. And I added some numbers so it's really easy to see what we're talking about. Um, once again, for those of you who didn't see my previous video, the way it works is uh, your coordinates are 0, 0, which are right here in the corner. And it goes, uh, this is the X axis, and then this is the Y axis. And as you can see, um, this one I have it based on 100 by 100 to make it real simple. And so uh, I got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, et cetera. And then going down 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, et cetera. It's real easy to see. So let's start out with this circle here. The circle uh, is really simple. Um, first of all, all of my uh, figures are gonna have this uh, stroke and the stroke width. So the stroke is the actual line and then the stroke width is of course how wide the line is. That way it's really easy to see. And of course you can do a fill of uh, anything. You can do yellow, for example, Oops, yellow. I keep doing yellows, yellow. And you can even style each one of these. So for example, I could do opacity, ah, opacity of 0.3 and there you go. So that's uh, some of the examples you can have, but uh, of course you can do what you want after. But this is how we're going to just kind of talk about how each one of these is drawn. So for the circle, it's really simple. Um, you do the center dot for X axis and a center for the Y axis. So in this case, we have our center at 50 by 50, which is right smack dab in the middle. Of course, if I would take the X axis and move it over, for example, to 30, then the whole thing moves over to the center of 30 and then down 50. If I move down or up, for example, to 10, then it moves it off the grids, okay? So that's kind of how it works. So let's go back here, move it back to the center. And of course our radius is from center. So we have 30, two, three, one, two, three, out from the center. So this would bring it down to 20 on the X axis and up to 80, 20 and 80. So of course, if we change this to 20 radius, it only brings it out to 20. Okay, so the idea behind the circle is very easy. Okay, so let's uh, move on. Let's go to the ellipse. Okay, so the ellipse is similar to the circle, except that instead of uh, just the R, the radius being all the way around the same, you have a radius on the X axis, in this case, 40 out. So here's the center, one, two, three, 40 out this way and 40 out that way. And then you have the, um, the radius of Y. So you can do the opposite. You could make it taller than it is wider by doing a bigger Y axis than an X axis. So the concept for the ellipse is really simple also. Okay. Very good. Next, we'll have the uh, polygon. Now, the polygon, we're going to have to draw out so that I can show you how that works. So, polygon. Okay. And, of course, let's go ahead and borrow this from the uh, ellipse. Okay. So, for polygon and polyline, um, all we'll need are points. Now, for the points, uh, it's exactly how you, you, you uh, what I mean, you're going to have your coordinate points and it's going to draw a line from there. But there's a big difference between the polygon and the polyline, which I'm going to show you in a second. So let's first do our polygon. 
So we're going to need a point. So right here, we're going to draw a triangle. Okay, so let's start here. Let's make it kind of as equal as possible. So let's bring it over to 25, 10. Now, you don't need to put a comma between your coordinates, but I would recommend doing that just so that you can keep track of your coordinates. So 25, 10, we're going to bring it down to 10 by 40. Okay, so we have a the first part of our line here and then we're going to bring it over to uh, let's see this is 40 by 40 okay now here's the big difference um, here is our polyline notice that we have a terminating line that it drew for us so it assumes whatever uh, once I have two sides out two sides anything more than two sides will give me a terminating line for instance, if I brought this out, uh, have an extra point, and I put the extra point right here at, uh, let's say, 20, uh, 50 by 20, then now I have a quadrilateral that uh, has a terminating line right here. Okay. Now, as opposed to the polyline, The polyline, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have points. Now, if we start our polyline at 75 by 10 and then move down to, this is 60 by 40, we get our same type of triangle here. But now this time when I move over to 90 by 40, there is no terminating line you see no terminating line it just does a line that you know a line segment different line segments and again if i move it over to what is this 100 by 10 or actually it's not 100 by 10 it's 100 by 20 There you go. So we have the same idea that we had here with our poly uh, gone, but here we have a polyline and there's no terminator. Okay, so that's the difference between your polygon and your polyline. Okay, on the next video, I'm going to talk about two types of uh, paths that are really complicated, but uh, we're going to try to uncomplicate them for you. Um, and those are going to be the... Um, the quadratic arc and the uh, cubic Bezier arc. Thank you very much.